Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kay Sam and today we are going to learn about something called phrase mixing. Phrase mixing, you should actually know I'm talking about something relating to making transitions and that is what we have today on the table. Before we really go far, I want to apologize for any background noise and also please make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn on that small bell and without wasting any much time, let's get right in. Now talking about phrase mixing and then transitions right here, most DJs in some cases understand transitions as a, a jump between a different genre of music into the next one. But also even if you're mixing within the same genres of music, still you have to know and it's important to get in mind when, where and how to transition into the next track from one deck to the next one. And that is why we're here today. Phrase mixing today basically focuses mostly on uh, when and where. The how really doesn't matter in today's video. You can do anything to make sure you jump, but you should know the right place at the right spot and the right time to move into the next song. Uh, before we even go far, I want to make some disclaimers. For today's example, I'm going to use the uh, remixes of the same song, but different remixes just because of copyright issues. And of course, you'll excuse me if they don't really sound uh, the best master quality. But that is it. The song is called Forever Different Remixes. You should just imagine they are different songs. But that is going to make sense as long as you understand what I'm explaining right here. So before we go far, I want you to go and select uh, the bar counter. There's something called bar counter. Virtual DJ has that and that is an advantage for us. And then I will start explaining what a phrase is. So when you come to performance, what, when you come to layout here, you come down to uh, waveform display. And then you come to bar counter. I am using the performance layout. Uh, I hope the pro layout also has something like that. Yeah, so it still has the bar counter. But I like the performance layout, so I'll come back right here and then put on the bar counter. Just like that. So this is going to help me count bars. But then what are bars in any way? Now I'm going to use the simplest explanation. I'm going to try and be so, so slow and clear as much as I can for you to understand. Now a bar here, one bar has four beats. One bar has four beats. Each time you see these things counting up to one, two, three, four, that is one bar. You understand? So it has 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then it will jump into the second bar. That is a bar, just like this. So that was one bar consisting of four beats. Now, most songs have phrases that take 16 bars. You understand? There are songs that have phrases of 8 bars. There are songs that have phrases of 16 bars and so on and so forth. One of these days, you'll also come across remixes that have 4 bars and then something new happens in a song. You understand? So, what I really mean here is that uh, some songs, like these are remixes, for, for example, they have eight bars and then something new happens in the song maybe an element is included in the song maybe a chorus comes in or maybe another instrument comes in or something is eliminated from the song after the eight bars you understand what i mean keep in mind the four beats making up one bar so one bar times eight something comes in now it depends on what songs you are playing in most cases on youtube here you will find a most examples will be EDM or house songs, house music. Uh, the tutorials that will explain to you these things, they will be using those songs. I, I have decided to make it so simple. I'm, I'm using these chill remixes, Afro chill rather, of the popular songs that we know to explain. So these might not be the same things. So you have to understand your songs. If the songs you're playing take up to 16 bars, you should know because it's going to help you to know where and when to start the next song. And then when to transition into the next one. So this song here, I have decided to mark some few points. Uh, just depending on how many bars we know we have. Now this is it. I think I'm going to play, for example, so you, so you can hear. I want us to count these bars up to 8. When we are hitting the ninth bar, something new must come to this song. I want you to listen to it and then understand what I'm saying. Let's go.
Yeah, so what you realized from that is that uh, the first eight bars were like an intro, then something like a hook came in. You understand? So that helps you to understand. Also, uh, the 16th bar is also here. I want us to listen up to bar number 16, and then we know if we can mix at eight bars or transition at 16 bars. In this case, we are looking at where to drop the next song from this side. Now, what, what I'll do is that when we reach at the 16th bar here on this deck A, that is when I'll be starting my song on deck B. So when we reach 16 bars from here, I'll be coming in with this deck B. I'm going to play this. Now, we have already listened to the other one. We have 8 bars, but we want to mix at bar number 16. So we, sh we shall also listen to this and make sure we, we master how many bars this has before we can really get into a chorus. Let's also listen to it briefly and understand. Alright, so this song would also go up to 16 bars before the chorus comes in. But what you can realize is that it has heavy beats already coming in at bar number 9. Meaning we shall count 8 bars and then on the ninth bar we should be ready to drop this. Meaning we shall kill this one as soon as this one reaches 8 bars. You understand? We shall drop, we shall play this one up to 16 bars and then we drop this one. We let it play up to 8 bars and then we kill this other one to give way for this one. Now what I will do here is that how I will transition is that uh, I will kill the vocals of this one to make sure the, vo the voices don't collide with each other while I'm trying to bring this one in. And then when I am ready to, to kill this other deck A, I'll bring back the vocals and then just turn down the slider, which is here. So let's get right in. Yeah, so I really hope you heard it. That is how it would be. How I transitioned was to first kill down the vocals of deck B before I dropped it. And then later killed the slider, the, the volume of deck A. After immediately bringing back the vocals there. So that is it. So you understood. You really heard how it was very easy. So what really helps you here is more about how to count the bars to understand the phrases. And also keep playing your songs. Practicing with your songs makes you understand the structure of your songs. So here we know that the, the drums come in at 8 bars. Yet this one, it's just a slight change right here. The chorus comes at bar number 16. Yes, here also the chorus comes at bar number 16. But we could not wait for these drums to collide with the other part of the song. So we had to introduce this one just after 8 bars. So you should keep practicing to understand how your songs are structured, how, how many bars, how many bars does each phrase of your song really take, and then you'll understand. So if you're a beginner, you should always practice with 16 bars before you can really come down to 8 bars. Maybe before we, before we conclude the video, there is something we should correct. Uh, there is uh, these bars. Sometimes you load a song and then you find that it's starting from negative bars, like this one which is starting at negative 12 bars. So if you really make sure, if you really think this plays at the same the exact place 
like that. There's no silence here. We can reset this. So what you have to do is come here and right click and then come to POI's editor. So all you have to do is if this is the right point, which is showing you here in green, you'll come and make sure you change the type to load point. I want you to, ch to check here. The moment I say load point, it's going to come to, it's going to reset itself to 1.1, just like that. So you can give it a name, whatever it is. Even if you don't name it, it is fine. You can now easily count right from here. So that was that. Sometimes it's if it's in negative, it's going to confuse you. So make sure you make sure load points clear. I really hope I made sense in this one here. In case I was so fast, please slow down the video. If there's something you want to ask, please make sure you ask. But that was it. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on the small bell. I have tutorials coming in every week. See you in the next one.